Gentlemen, if you could please turn your cell phones off or silence them at this time, it would be greatly appreciated. situation handled here. At this time, I'd also like to thank everybody for coming out and your attendance. This is a crucial matter and everybody's attendance here is greatly appreciated. Uh, we all must bond together to make sure that we eliminate these taxes and I feel like we're in a good position where we can do that. All right, everybody. My name is Shane Klopp and I'd officially like to welcome you to the Pennsylvania School Property Tax Elimination Conference and Seminar. Tonight, you're gonna to receive a vast amount of information. Through, throughout the presentations, if you'd like to refer to your handouts, there is multiple information listed in there for you, as well the introduction and PowerPoint presentation that you've been given. Uh, you could receive that out front and you could follow along as we go through each slide. At this time, I'd also like to thank our host for the evening, Stout Associates Realtors, and the Pennsylvania Taxpayer Cyber Coalition. We would also like to thank every one of you for attending. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to recognize all the politicians and activists that are here in support of us tonight. Please hold your applause until we read all names. Senator David Arbel. Senator Judy Schwein. Representative Jim Cox, Ron Bolt of the Pennsylvania Taxpayer Cyber Coalition, Representative Thomas Calderon, Representative Mark Rossi, Representative Barry Joswiak, Representative Mark Gillen, and I know that we also have multiple other representatives in attendance. I'd like to thank you all very much for coming. Before we transition here, I'd like to take a special thanks, and that would be to Mr. David Baldinger, who tonight cannot be here for personal reasons, but is a true pioneer for the elimination of school property taxes in our Commonwealth. <laughs> Mr. Ron Boltz is here representing him and has done a fantastic job with representing Mr. Baldinger and the Pennsylvania Taxpayer Cyber Coalition. So now what I'd like to do, we're gonna move on. I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of what we're gonna be covering for this introductory presentation, and then I'm gonna be playing everybody a brief video. School property taxes in the state of Pennsylvania are out of control, and they're driving the life out of Pennsylvania residents. Pennsylvania school boards cannot continuously raise our school taxes greater than the rate of inflation and expect us to be able to survive. More than 10,000 Pennsylvanians lose their home to share sale each year. That's people that work nine to five every day, maybe more, working, trying to support a family. In many areas of the state, homes at a median sale price of $200,000 are carrying a tax burden of $6,500 or more. This makes homes almost impossible to sell or own, and it's destroying the real estate market in our state of Pennsylvania. At this time, I'd like to play a brief video for you before we continue with the presentation. Yeah. 
Harris County, but taxes are just too high. We need to retire. Couldn't keep it up. My name is Carl Schwarzenegger from Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania, and this whole issue of the property tax here in Pennsylvania is a really large issue to me. Um, we've been very greatly affected by it. My property also got caught up in the residential reverse appeals that certain school districts have been doing. And so my private property tax has doubled from $6,000 a year to $12,000 a year in the, uh, in, in, within the first year and a half after I bought my property. That kind of an increase is unsustainable. It has created a, a ridiculous strain upon our family. And probably the best uh, way I can describe it is, is a choking sensation, a desperate choking sensation as I every year have to try to borrow money, come up with ways to pay those taxes so I don't lose my property. Hi, I'm Carol Gardecki. I live in West Lawn. Um, I spent 30 years on the borough council there. And uh, the whole time that I was there, I've seen our school taxes go up and up and up. Now I'm retired. And my school taxes personally actually take three months of my social security checks. So that's one quarter of my social security that I paid in. Uh, I have trouble making repairs to my house because it's all I can do to just keep things going and pay those taxes. My name is John McCartney and my wife and I live in Christiana, Pennsylvania, down here in Pennsylvania. And our taxes, uh, our school taxes are about $6,000 a year. That is the most I have ever paid for anything per year.
A basic home that costs $150,000 at an interest rate of 4%, where school taxes are $250 a month, about $3,000 annually, and you include $50 for homeowner's insurance, that payment is going to come out to $1,016.12. For that exact same home, with the elimination of school property taxes, your payment is down $250 to $766.12. Now, if that $1,000 a month payment was a viable option for that owner, and they wanted to see if that $200 was applied to principal and interest rather than school property tax, they could afford $52,000 more and a home at $202,000. 30% equity is lost immediately to both buyer and seller with school property taxes in Pennsylvania. The elimination of school property taxes in Pennsylvania will reduce the total cost needed to purchase a home, save costs on tax certification, save time and money on administering tax escrows, as well, buyers could simply afford to spend more on their home. Now, this is a personal thing to myself. I am 25 years old, and as I was gathering my information because I knew this presentation was going to be a big thing, I was speaking with my family who was here in attendance tonight, and it scared me. You know, I'm worried about my mom and dad as they're reaching retirement. Are they going to be able to afford their home once it's gone? Will that put us in a financially unstable situation? My dad looks at me and goes, what? Huh? We're worried about you. At an increase of 5.6% per year, imagine what those taxes are going to be in 20 years for me. And my heart fell in my stomach. It truly is a terrifying thought. The next subject I'd like to touch on is in Pennsylvania, do we truly own a home? Good question, right? Even if a home is paid off, we're still living at the risk of losing our home. That's money that could be generated back into our, commun our community and boost our economy. Simply put, the more money not spent on school property taxes is money that will be spent in our community, in our commonwealth, in turn creating jobs. The average rental rate goes up 2.6% per year. Home ownership taxes raise 5.6% per year. My question to you is, <laughs> who's that landlord? There's no home ownership in Pennsylvania. It's simply rentership to your landlord, Uncle Sam. I'd like to refer to the Pennsylvania Constitution, Article 1, Section 1, which school property tax is in direct violation of. All men are born equally free and independent and have certain inherent and indefeasible rights, among which are enjoying and defending life and liberty, of acquiring, possessing, and protecting both property and reputation. I'll say that again. Acquiring, possessing, and protecting property and reputation, and of pursuing their own happiness. Can you really pursue your own happiness when you're looking over your shoulder even after something is paid off? I'd like to quote Thomas Jefferson. To compel a man to subsidize with his taxes the propagation of ideas which he disbelieves and abhors is both sinful and tyrannical. It's tyranny, ladies and gentlemen. With the elimination of school property taxes, we can take a little less out of each of our pockets. Typical closing costs on a home of a low range of $100,000 can range from $4,500 to $6,500. If you take out school taxes, you instantaneously will save two to $3,000. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as every one of us in here know, in our economy right now, currently, two to $3,000 is not a small sum of money. Two to $3,000 can increase the quality of life for a family for a substantial amount of time these days. This is proof, once again, that the rumors that claim that property tax elimination doesn't benefit lower-income families 
is totally false, and in fact, it is the polar opposite. A home is the single largest asset a family will ever own. It can be passed down from generation to generation, securing a better quality of life, not just in the short term, but in the long term. School property tax does, in fact, have a great effect on our rental market. Although some people will not admit that capitalism will even out our markets, lower school property taxes will lower rents. If I could give you an example, if I'm a rental property owner and I purchase a home prior to school tax elimination and I charge $1,000 rent, I'm collecting about $250 of school tax. Once that tax is eliminated, I have $250 profit from that rental rate. Now, if investor B buys the same property, a comparable property, but after school taxes are eliminated, he can charge $850 for the rent. So, common sense is going to tell you for me to stay a viable business in that industry, I have to have a competitive rate. When's the last time somebody just gave $250 away because they wanted to? Sir, can I have $250? I didn't think so. <laughs> the extra money that will be saved from the elimination of school property tax allows people to grow financially to a point that they could have never fathomed before. If rents were to drop by $250, that money could be saved, set aside, and used as a down payment on a home. Again, creating opportunity. And isn't that the American dream? As we speak on the American dream, that's something I was taught in Berks County. I am a Wilson graduate. From the time I was in elementary school to the time I got to college, living the American dream. It's tough today to live in the true American dream. Not to be repetitive, but the people that say running is cheaper than buying could believe the contrary at this point. Some people may believe that with a basic mortgage payment of $600, you could find a better accommodation with something included that could put them in a better situation. But if you eliminate school property tax, you're freeing up an average of $200. That's $200 that could be put towards principal and interest on a home and allow you $41,000 to your maximum home buying price. Ladies and gentlemen, every $100 steals. It's thievery, ladies and gentlemen. It steals. Every, every $100 is stealing $20,000 worth of equity from that owner. Would you call the cops if you had $20,000 stolen? I would. <laughs> to put it simply, school property taxes, when eliminated, will have you looking forward to a higher maximum home buying price between forty to fifty thousand dollars. If I could quote the Pennsylvania Constitution once again, Article One, this time Section Twenty Six, neither the Commonwealth nor any political subdivision thereof shall deny any person the enjoyment of a civil right, nor discriminate against any person in the exercise of that civil right. When people can't afford homes or to maintain their homes once they paid off, I see that as a violation of my civil rights. With the elimination of school property tax, we're looking to empower Pennsylvanians. There are people who work hard every day, strenuous hours, to pay off their home. And they shouldn't be forced to choose between living a healthy, competent life and having the home that they built their family in. There are people that struggle every day on fixed incomes, and they have to make choices such as buying the medicines needed to survive or losing their home. How about having heat in the winter or losing their home? Having their kids work younger than they should have to to support a family and missing out on the best years of their lives or losing their home or choosing between being able to eat and putting food on your table or losing your home. If someone has a home paid off, which is a feat in itself today, do they really not have the freedom to live their life without the threat of losing a paid off asset? not being able to afford the things in life that are necessary to live a competent life and continually enjoy it. Again, I'm going to quote the Pennsylvania Constitution. This seems to be familiar. Article 1, Section 13. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, 
nor cruel punishments inflicted. Cruel punishments. I'd like to refer you to the video that we saw at the beginning. The gentleman that's explained it as a choking sensation. A choking sensation for years at a time? That is cruel and unusual punishment. And we can't stand for that in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I'd like to quote John Jay, former Chief Justice of New York City. No power on earth has the right to take our property from us without our consent. The elimination of school property taxes in Pennsylvania will help bring thriving businesses into the Commonwealth. Eliminating school property tax makes having a business in Pennsylvania both more profitable and more viable. As an example, Cabela's in Hamburg, Pennsylvania was granted a 10-year taxation-free agreement. I think the effects of that are very clear for the eye to see. There's well over 40, 40 businesses that have put themselves in the local area and are now thriving and living a confident life, creating jobs for that area and bettering our commonwealth. Someone had a great idea and realized that this could benefit not just one group of people, but our entire state and our entire community in that Hamburg area. The more that we're able to bring business in, the more jobs we're going to have and the more jobs we're going to create, our economy will grow stronger. New jobs create new incomes. New incomes create opportunity. And opportunity is something that not many people have in our commonwealth anymore. Also, with a higher employment rate, state income tax is going to increase. And that's just going to further offset school property tax elimination. For decades, we've increased the size and scope of our state government. And we thought that that would improve the lives of our Pennsylvania citizens. But the growing burden of that same government is driving away both present and potential entrepreneurs and jobs in our state. To put this in perspective, between 2012 and 2013, Pennsylvania lost 21,578 residents. To put that in financial aspects, $935 million in lost tax revenue. This slide is showing you the average real estate tax rate. Now, if I myself were to own a home in Louisiana, Alabama, and Hawaii, all at the same time, I'd still be paying less than to have one home in Pennsylvania, and I'd have $531 to spare. That's a great tax payment for my fourth home in Delaware. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are ever looking for an excuse to move to Hawaii, <laughs> aloha. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be getting to our other speakers momentarily here. I just want to finish up on a few things with you. I appreciate you allowing me the time to speak to you tonight. Again, as I was researching and I was doing my due diligence with the situation for the presentation, I started asking some questions that I felt deserved a solid answer. The problem was, every time I asked the question, I got laughed at. So, I figured I'd try my hand at stand-up comedy. And you guys are going to be my first audience. <laughs> Alright, I got some good material for you. It's in the form of questions. You ready to go? Number one, do you believe Pennsylvania is one of the best states to retire? No. Oh, rough crowd, hey. <laughs> Alright, I got another one for you. If school property taxes are not eliminated, you think the government's going to stop increasing them? No. Oh, I get it. Okay. Don't kill the messenger. Do you believe that school districts in Pennsylvania efficiently manage their finances? No. Whoa, that was a rough one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the craziness behind this being a joke falls with responsibility. Thousands of dollars each and every year are spent on school taxes, and good teachers are still forced to pay out of pocket for pens, pencils, pads, folders, necessities. And if they can't pay it, it still falls back on the taxpayers' laps because the parents are the one that have to supply it then. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers are not our enemies. In fact, we're allies, and we're fighting against corruption in our systems. The reason that I bring these things up 
is because, well, casinos are supposed to save us from the dreaded, you know, school property tax. Well, since we've gotten that relief, our taxes have increased by 43%. Wait a minute. Yep, that's right. Our taxes have increased by 43%. The reason that people laugh at these statements as jokes is because Pennsylvania is the 10th highest tax state in the nation. If that's not good enough, we went for number nine for state migration. In layman's terms, people leaving the state of Pennsylvania to go elsewhere. And I understand that the argument is going to be as retirees. But ladies and gentlemen, what's wrong with retiring in Pennsylvania? What's wrong with retiring in a place that you have built your life, that your roots are in? What is wrong with that? And the fact is, it's not all retirees. Because in the same exact amount of time, we lost 1.7 million tax exemptions, which tells me families are leaving our state. Elimination of school property tax needs to happen right now. It's imminent. Tom Wolf has stated he has an agreement in place to not eliminate school property tax and increase our state sales tax to seven and a quarter percent. If you didn't know, if you didn't know, that's the second highest, just behind California. I thought you would. Mr. Wolf has also stated that he has the votes and the support to get it passed. But I know in my heart that the people that took their time out here to spend with us and fight the same cause would never support such an inadequate ideology. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is casino failure all over again. If Pennsylvania was able to fund our schools in a fair way, we wouldn't have to revert back to being a modern-day mafia and stealing homes to pay for it. Ironically, some of our great leadership, I mean, our current leadership, believes that more taxation without elimination is the answer. Well, I guess you guys are in the same, you know, shoes as me. I'm afraid that the big bad wolf is going to huff and puff and take my house away. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to form our groups together now, and we need to take action. If people do not support 76, we will bond together, and we will form groups and subgroups, and we will fund the opposition's campaign for those that do not vote for House Bill and Senate Bill 76. Everybody in this room that has taken their time to come out here, everybody that's hosted this event is doing everything we can to fight the good fight. Now it's up to everybody in attendance. When you leave here tonight, email every senator, every legislator, every representative that you can and let them know how you feel about House Bill, Senate Bill 76. There is an entire list of every one of those emails available right out here in the front. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to end with one thing and that is a great gentleman by the name of Mr. Sugar brought it to my attention that when he called Mr. Wolf's office, they had a flooded amount of calls regarding House Bill Senate Bill 76. Imagine that. I'd like to provide you with a phone number. So please get your phones or your pads and papers, and I'm going to give you a phone number to call, ladies and gentlemen, and that is to the Big Bad Wolf. Please, please, take your time. Get it out. Ladies and gentlemen, 717-787-2500. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd really like to thank you and I appreciate you allowing me to speak with you. I appreciate you taking the time to come out and fight for a just cause. Now is the time that we must bond together and make school property tax elimination a realization. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a brief five-minute intermission, and I'm going to be turning the reins over to Mr. Ron Bolts of the Pennsylvania Taxpayer Cyber Coalition. Thank you.